going on you guys my name is rage and we are back today with a video guide and playthrough for you all in today's video we're going to be going through the next series here of villain 71 to 73 now as you guys may or may not know i did actually start off my channel by creating the 120k aim team guides and that's really what helped a lot of players push through the nodes ultimately to unlocking hella here which um has amazing end game value even for a player like myself already that's played for over a year so with that being said, uh, we're actually going to be looking at a 125k Hydra team. Uh, it's, I've already made videos for the AIM team, but seeing as how my Hydra team was not built up yet, I took this as a very nice opportunity to be able to showcase some videos here. So hopefully this helps you guys build up your roster, gives you a sense of uh, how strong they need to be, especially if you want to push forward to Villains Hero 7 here. Uh, so with that being said, uh, let's go ahead and talk about Red Skull here. He is going to be the core piece of this team. As you can see here, he is quite built. I got him at 41k, but he's going to be the main leader because it's really Red Skull that's going to be ultimately allowing his team to revive and come back thanks to his charges. Um, so as you can see, I don't have any T-Force on his abilities, but I did have the ISO 8 healer there just to provide sustainable, sustainable healing and support for his fellow Hydra minions. Moving forward here, you can see I got my Hydra Sniper here at 18k. As you can see, level 5 and level 3 on the abilities to the left here. And consistent with Red Skull, it's going to be an Iso 8 healer as well. Next, we got Hydra Armored Guard here with tier 9. And consistent with the previous two, the Iso 8 healer. And as you can see with his abilities as well, the level 5s and the level 3s here. And it's really nice with Armored Guard because he does have that taunt and he can cleanse conditions that's on him. So he's definitely going to be the main tank that we're going to utilize. Um, Hydra Rifle Trooper. Now, I would say this character is probably one of the key pieces to this team due to the fact that whenever he does actually die, he actually does have this passive where he comes back on revive and he does actually deal uh, additional damage upon his revival. And his revival is going to be thanks again to Red Skull. So that's where we're really going to try to take advantage here for that extra damage. You can see he's built a little stronger too, the tier 10. And consistent with the previous guys, we do have the ISO 8 level one healer as well just to give that sustainability and additional healing and last but not least it is gonna be hydra scientist here at 22k uh got him built up over time just due to the six yellow that you see but consistent with the previous minions no t4s you can see we've only leveled up the level five here on the left here and the level three for the passive with that being said you guys let's dive right into the gameplay for node seven three Starting off here, you're going to see that I do actually have both my Rifle Trooper and my Guard in the top right there. Uh, that's separated by Red Skull being on the opposite side. That way I can prevent those two sides from being attacked together with chain attacks. And it just keeps them separated because, uh, you know, with our Guard, he's going to be taunting and grabbing damage. And then whenever Rifle Trooper does fall, he's going to be doing a spam AoE damage burst. So that's really, really key and pivotal for us. So starting off here, you guys, I'm um, not sure what's going on with Ronan there being weaker, but you know, at the very beginning, we don't really get much of a choice because you can see that there's a taunt that we have to just go ahead and attack the uh, the guard there. So, you know, not really a choice here, but something to keep in mind, consistent with my previous videos, just keep in mind, try not to use Scientist's uh, special ability in terms of being able to apply the death proof as well as deflect um, on Trooper because we do want Trooper to be the one that's dying. Um, the moment he dies, he does spawn back with his res and it does do, do that spam AoE damage. So that's why it's really important. So you can see here, starting off, we have Red Skull here just summoning the allies. Um, Namor, I don't like the fact that they have defense up. So I'm actually going to buy my time here. And uh, I would not recommend using any of Namor's abilities just yet. We want to just save his abilities for the right time. Uh, with that being said, you can see that with the first turn here, uh, we're really not going to be given too much options here in terms of who to attack, just because we have that uh, guard there having the taunt here. So we just go ahead, try to attack him as much as possible, but definitely one of the key targets we will be aiming for is going to be Ronan because of the fact that he has summons, and we just need to be wary of that. Uh, fortunately, we do have Red Skull being able to summon so many allies on our side to give us those benefits. Um, the sooner that guard goes down, the sooner we can go ahead and actually start attacking Ronan because you can see that he can quickly build up an army as well just due to the fact that he can also summon allies. So you can see finally we get a chance to actually be able to go ahead and finish off the guard here. And now with that being said we can finally resume attacking Ronan here in terms of taking him down. And keep in mind the next wave does actually spawn when there's 7 out of 10 enemies remaining. So that means out of this cluster we can take down 2 more before the next wave spawns. And generally with that being said I do like to take down their health pool as much as possible before the next wave. You can see that with Ronan summoning here. Um, 
you know personally the nice thing about his minions is that they, you can actually one shot them so just keep track of who are the weaker ones there as you can see i just finished them off just to get them out of the way here but once again resume attacking ronan here and the nice thing is we did save namor's ability so you bet we're going to be able to utilize that now as well um, and Red Skull's ultimate is very powerful, so if you don't want to use it and you want to save it for next wave, go ahead. I actually use it because I just do I do want to aim for Noble and just take out as much as I can of her, especially with her being able to cleanse. Um, I just figured that it would be great to deal a significant amount of damage for her, especially if I don't want her going forward into the next wave. Um, now, looking back at the footage now, I re do regret not actually attacking the Oracle because Oracle does provide a lot of sustainability which keeps this team going. But fortunately, uh, I think out of the three initial nodes in uh, Villain 7, um, this is definitely the easiest one out of the three. So I don't think a lot of players will have issues if you can get past uh, Villain 7-1 and 7-2. You can see now finishing off Ronan, 8 out of 10 enemies left. We can go ahead and actually just finish off Noble here. And if we do that, it should actually spawn the next wave here. So just be wary of that. And we go ahead now, just continually allocating damage. And the, wa the wave will spawn now. It's just a timing issue in terms of when they actually will appear. But you'll see here in the next few seconds, they do actually pop up. So you just really want to do as much damage as you can, whether it be allocating or actually applying and finishing off the Oracle there. So you can see now with this next wave, it is going to be the remaining uh, characters for this wave. So really at this point, I would finish off whoever you see that has low health. But the key targets is going to be the Kree Reapers because of the fact that they do the most damage. Um, you, you have the guard there that doesn't actually do anything. He just taunts, right? So the key thing is just making sure you take down the Reapers. And once you take down the Reapers, it's pretty much smooth sailing at that point because it will be consisting of a team mixture of the uh, Oracle as well as Kree Nobles. And to be on quite frank, they don't do a lot of damage. So at this point, it's just making sure that your Red Skull charges is active, making sure he's uh, good to go in terms of being able to revive. And really, I, I, you know, you don't need to necessarily three star this uh, in order to push forward. But it is nice just to get the three star unlocked so that way you don't have to go back later. But definitely very possible. I think, uh, I think this is definitely the Hydra synergy with Red Skull is definitely easier than the way I attempted before in my originally my videos with the 120k aim team. Um, just due to the fact that you just get so many second chances of them being able to be revived. Thanks once again to the uh, Red Skull as well as his Hydra Synergy. So at this point now, um, we are just going to go ahead and just continue rampaging here and finishing off Reaper. And once he's down, honestly, at this point, it's just coasting through and just finishing off everyone else who targeted damage. So uh, the nice thing about these guys is that, you know, although they have the similar combat power to us, they actually do have less HP and health. And they do seem quite squishy, as you can see. You just really need to be able to kind of focus on all your attacks. And fortunately, like I said, uh, with Red Skull being on our team, he just provides, provides some amazing support benefits for our roster, as well as the Hydra synergy in terms of them being able to be revived over and over again, especially if Red Skull has those charges uh, built up on his, uh, on his character. So there you guys have it. We're going to go ahead, finish off Noble here. But that is the three-star unlock once again. We barely even had to use Namor. Um, so as always, you guys, do appreciate you checking out my channel, uh, checking out these videos. Hope this was able to provide another perspective for you guys, especially with you newer players out there trying to push forward into unlocking Hella. So thank you, as always, for watching, and I'll see you in the next one.